Hello everyone from YouTube. Good afternoon. My name's Chris. I'm here to give you a brief overview of the raw capabilities of the LG G4. I think this is something that not very many people are talking about and it's a really great feature. It sets the phone apart from every other phone on the market. I believe there are some very expensive, I think it's a Panasonic makes a phone that does raw and I think the only other phone that takes raw images is the Lumia 1020, the 41 megapixel camera. So I just wanted to give everyone a really good idea of how this phone works when you're taking raw images. Now, the other nice thing that I don't think very many people have talked about is that you can actually edit these photos right on the phone for free. So I know some people are sort of apprehensive about, well, I don't really need the raw photos. I don't want the trouble of having to put the photos on my computer anytime I want to edit them and then save them and export them and put them back on the phone and then send them via text message or Flickr or anything like that. But the reality is you don't actually have to do that. You get some additional, um, you get some additional control when you upload them, but it's not necessary or when you import them to your computer. So the first thing that you need to do is download Adobe Photoshop Express. And to do that, you can just go to the Play Store. It is completely free. Uh, you do get some additional options if you're a member of the Adobe Creative Cloud. The two options that you get are noise reduction and something that they call defog, which I'm not exactly sure what that is. To me, it seems like a mixture of Increasing the blacks, um, this is for photographers. If you're familiar with the Adobe Camera Raw on the computer or Lightroom, it looks to me like they're increasing the blacks and maybe increasing the whites on the level. Um, but other than those two options, you have every other control, including clarity, exposure, shadows, highlights, tint, uh, or otherwise known as temperature. So there's a lot of really great features about the Adobe Photoshop Express. Let me see if turning the brightness down here will make it a little bit more visible. So I've got it already downloaded here. I'm gonna open it and show you guys what it looks like. So this is the home screen. Now this is completely free. Again, you do not have to sign in to take advantage of that. So the next thing that you need to do is open up your, your camera Mine's already in manual mode, but I'll start from simple. So standard, this is what the camera looks like on the LG G4. And what sort of prompted me to make this video was seeing a lot of reviews where people were just comparing, okay, here's the auto on this camera, and then they compared it to the most advanced modes on similar flagship devices like the Galaxy S6 or the iPhone 6, uh, iPhone 6 Plus. And that's not what this phone was created for. This phone was created for the person that is maybe a novice photographer or even a professional photographer or someone who really wants to go a step further with their photos and their mobile photos. And so to just say, okay, this is what it looks like, you know, when you take an automatic photo and then compare it to the most advanced features on a Galaxy S6, which don't even really compare to the features on this one, I think just does not run home the point that what this phone can do really sets it apart from any kind of competition. So the first thing that you need to do is set the camera to manual mode. So you click the three dots here, you choose the last option manual, and this gives you a ton of additional options. Um, if you're a photographer, then you're pretty familiar with things like shutter speed, ISO, you know, manual focus and temperature control um, and of course exposure compensation. If you're not a photographer, the easiest way to start using this mode that I would recommend is to simply turn it on in the manual mode and then get a feel for it by using exposure compensation, which is this, this middle, or it's the third button, third option from the left. And what that's gonna let you do is compensate darker or brighter. So, and it's pretty self-explanatory. So you can start turning it up and you'll notice that the image gets brighter. And then you go the opposite way and the image gets darker. But notice here on the top, you actually have your 
um, exposure and your ISO settings. So you can see what it's doing when you're increasing the exposure compensation. So right now, it looks to me like we're at ISO 800 and shutter speed 1 8th of a second. So I just think that's a really good way to get a feel for what this, this phone can do uh, as far as changing the settings while you're getting ready to take a photo. One thing I really, really did not like about the Samsung phones is that they would give you some basic ISO options and then they would give you what they called a exposure compensation slider, but it never worked. I mean, if you were in any kind of tricky lighting situation where it was a little bit dark, you could set the compensation all the way up to plus two and it would just get a little bit lighter and then a whole heck of a lot grainier. So that's where LG really shines because their shutter is actually staying open for longer. It's not some kind of trick, let's increase the ISO through the ceiling and get you this really grainy image. No, the shutter is actually staying open for a lot longer. So that's definitely a great bonus. Um, another great thing is that if you want to start getting into the more advanced stuff, you can start adjusting the shutter speed manually. And just by increasing it, you know, even all the way up to one four thousandth of a second, you can get an idea for what your image is going to look like, which is completely dark because it's such a small amount of time that the shutter is actually open. So this was a little bit more than I wanted to talk about. Um, in this video, but I think it's important to really say that this phone can take the picture that you're you're wanting it to take. You know, to just open it up in auto and and then compare it to, you know, full HDR mode on a Galaxy S6, and then say, well, the LG G4 didn't expose the background properly, or it didn't expose the micro shot properly, or the white balance was off on this shot and then it wasn't on this shot, but the background wasn't exposed. You know, just little nitpicky things like that. When you're, when you're, LG didn't put the time and development into their auto shooting mode. It's there because if you're not comfortable with this completely, you know, they want to appeal to the masses so they can say, well, yeah, you can take an, an auto photo, but that's not where this phone shines. This phone shines by being able to take your creative eye and turn it into your creative photo. So enough about that. I'll start now getting into what um, what kind of settings you need to have in order to take a raw photo. So there's not any kind of tricky raw file like Nikon has their own custom .nef raws, and then Canon has the .cr2 format, but. Um, LG just went ahead and did a straight DNG, so it's kind of nice because um, while there is not as much control in terms of adjusting the exposure and brightness and highlights, things like that, as you would have if you had a straight RAW, um, a custom developed RAW, um, there is a lot of additional control afterwards. So the first thing that you want to do is choose this second from the bottom button here, and this says JPEG RAW. And of course, if you click it, then you just have JPEG. So we're going to make sure that it's JPEG raw. So it takes a full JPEG image and a DNG raw image. And once you have that set, you can take your picture. And I'll just take a picture of this, this glass right here. OK. So there's my photo. Now what we want to do is say, well, this wasn't exposed, or it's not as pretty as I'd like it, or you know, I wish it was a little bit more gritty or whatever your creative eye might be. So you click on the actual photo preview and that's going to take you into just like any other Android phone, your photo preview. But notice here in the top right, you have your DNG. So this is, this is a DNG image that you're viewing. And I'll just show you before how clear everything is. Really clear shot. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the ISO was at. This is taken, you know, sort of on auto exposure, which is a really good point because if any of those other reviews actually took a photo, a raw photo, and then compared it to a JPEG after they put it through Adobe Photoshop Express, the, the difference is night and day. So the first thing that we're going to do, and the battery is running a little bit low on this thing, so I'm trying to make this quick. The first thing you're going to do is just hit the share button. 
And now that's going to give you all of your standard share options. You can send it via text message, and that's actually when it compresses the JPEG in order to send through a text message. Um, but what we're going to do is just simply say Photoshop Express. So we click that, and it sends the image to Photoshop Express. It didn't work that time. Okay, so there it is. Our image is in Photoshop Express. Photoshop Express has a lot of cool uh, just preset kind of styles. So you can choose one of the preset styles. You can actually crop the image and straighten it. Um, and then you can adjust everything from the clarity to the sharpness. And these are the two that I was talking about in the beginning. The reduce noise and the defog. Those two you do not get if you're not a member of the Creative Cloud, uh, but that's okay, you don't need them. And then of course you have exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, temperature, tint, and then vibrance. So the first thing I like to do in a photo is take the highlights and actually turn them down. And now you'll be able to see how great this is for anyone who wants to take uh, take their photos to the next level. So you'll see when I start moving this slider, any, any part of the image that's brighter can actually be adjusted. And only that part of the image is adjusted. So I like to turn those, those down, um, and then I like to take the shadows and actually turn the shadows up. It kind of creates this faux HDR look um, but it really brightens your image up and gives it a lot more pop. Um, the other thing I like to do is turn the clarity all the way up, and this adds just a lot of grit. You can see there's all the way down. It's sort of hazy, and here's all the way up. And then I'll turn the sharpness up a little bit. Um, and then now here's the exposure. Now, the great thing to note about this is that you're not losing any image quality when you do this. Some people might say, well, I can take a regular JPEG from you know, my camera on my phone and then open up some any kind of Android photo editor and do the same thing. That's true, but you're not going to get the same quality. There's going to be a lot of JPEG artifacting because JPEGs are compressed images. They're not the data that's straight off the sensor. So this is super easy. Uh, this image maybe looks a little bit better if we turn the exposure down you can see some of the lighting and then let's uh, take the contrast and let's turn the contrast up let's actually expose this a little bit more okay um, now the next thing is this image is already pretty warm so maybe let's lighten it up a little bit so this is the purple green tint for those of you who are familiar with this on Photoshop. And then here we have the temperature, so we'll make it a little bit cooler because it's a nice drink, so we're gonna cool it down. And then here's the vibrance. Let's turn the vibrance down and make it sort of Film noir. Okay, so that's a really good example of how this works. And mind you, I did not lose any image quality here, so it's still just as good. There's there's no additional noise. Um, really, really nice image very clean and being a photographer myself it's pretty interesting and I guess it's because the, the sensor size is so small um, but typically when you're shooting on a full-frame camera with something like a 1.4 aperture it's very hard to get everything in focus um, and that's the point of that you know it's it the point of having a 1.4 aperture is to make sure that only what you're focused on is in focus. So because LG was able to make this very dual use in the sense that you can get those nice landscape shots and you can also get really nice macro shots uh, and then you can get some pretty nice bouquet uh, whenever you're taking portraits and things, I think that was 
a, a nice challenge that they were able to overcome. Um, so in here you also have red eye fix and then, you know, some borders and um, I believe this is blemish removal, things like that. But so now basically we're done with this image and what we're gonna do, they have another share button up here on the top right. We're just gonna go ahead and click that and here you can send it via text message or upload it to the Creative Cloud. Um, there's a couple different options, but we're just going to say save to gallery. And it's going to render our image now as a JPEG. It's still going to keep the raw image. In fact, it's still going to save your, your edited settings here as an XML file. So now let's view the image. We'll go to the gallery. And here is my new image. Let me see if I can make this so you can see the before and the after. Okay, so this is the before, this is the after. I think it's a lot more true to life after my edits, but you know, art is in the eye of the beholder. And of course, we still have the very same quality. Um, I believe that there is some limitations if you do not have the full version on the resolution that you can actually save this as. So, no, well, yeah, I've, I've got the full version, so it, it did save at full resolution, but I think on the free version, you can only save up to something like 2,500 by 1,500 pixels, but this should at least get you started with a good idea of how this works. So yeah, that's my, that's my review. I hope this sort of clears some things up for some people. I hope this, this makes some people feel more confident opening the manual mode. Um, there's just some pictures that this phone can take that you can't do with any other phone. It, it's just, you just can't because the way that the focus works on this, the way that you can adjust the ISO and the shutter speed and then the, the white balance and then take that perfect, perfect composition and then tweak it in something like Photoshop Express or Lightroom Express, uh, it really, it's, it's just awesome. Um, here, I'll give you some examples. So I took this with the phone and I edited it in the phone. Um, I believe I used Lightroom Express on this one. Lightroom gives you some more options as far as blacks go and um, I think that's it. I'll open it up and show you. But I took this in the phone. I also took this in the phone. I took this one in the phone which is just incredible because you you can see such detail in the eye of my dog and I really like eye, sh eye photographs because it really gives you a sense of emotion but you just can't take this I mean you I challenge anybody to go get their Galaxy S6 and take a photo that looks anywhere similar to this you can't probably gonna get a lot of uh, feedback on that comment this one I did not take with the phone, but I could. I took this one with my full frame. Let me see. I don't believe there are any more photos. No, I've only had this phone for maybe a week, so. Great stuff. Well, anyway, uh, I'm going to try to make some more reviews. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this makes some people a lot more confident using the manual mode. And I hope this makes 
Uh, I hope that makes it easier for some people to make their decision on which phone they'd like to purchase. So thank you for watching. Have a good day.